Welcome everyone, and we're back after a small hiatus uh, with a new episode of Idle Downtime. I'm your host, DX, and this time I'm joined by Derek, MetaHP, and Marberry. How's everyone? Doing alright, well, buddy. How are you? Uh, as for me, I had a really rough week because mm -hmm. last week my aunt died of COVID-19 and literally yesterday was the funeral and it has burned uh, deep into me because along mm. with my with, uh, with my aunt's daughter and her granddaughter I was the last one to push the coffin into the furnace so I might not be as happy as I usually am but those were my circumstances basically so I'm relying on you guys to carry me through this episode please thank you We'll do our best. We got you. We got your back. Um, and also, I was gonna say, um, you know, we have we have a lot of people that that check us out when we're, you know, we're very grateful for all of you. Uh, I want to say something right off the bat that you know, I think life is precious and I think life is beautiful. And for all the crap and stuff that we maybe talk about and go through and like our idols go through, at the end of the day, it's it all it's all about family. It's all about relationships and. DX, you suffered a tremendous loss to your family, and we're all there with you. And I hope all of you that are watching will also show a lot of love to DX, because remember, we wouldn't even have this show if it wasn't for DX saying, you know what, let's not stop doing what we've been doing for a couple years. And, uh, you know, well, I'm so grateful to you for giving us all a chance to just, you know, talk about idols and be silly. And Thank it you. sucks that you're hurting, but we got you. All yeah, right, so that's you. why I want to yeah. do this today. Let's just let's just dump let's just dive into it. Let's get your mind off this as best we can. I mean, I know it's gonna be impossible, but let's just try, okay? okay. And uh, I want I, I want to I want to start right away by first of all just de going straight to Matt and, and Maria and asking first of all how are you guys doing? You guys doing okay? Everything yeah. good? Life good? Yeah, surviving. Yeah, yeah. got a yeah. job. <laughs> Yay! Nice. What job though? Nice. And, good and job. <laughs> do we have somebody practicing to get a driver's license soon? I think maybe. Yeah. I've been like I've been doing really good for driving, but like oh. the written portion or the theory portion of the mm -hmm. driver's license, it's always such a pain in the arse. Oh. Especially oh, wow. because it's like they always have like tricky questions in there that yeah. are like, they so. never come up in real life. Oh right, and, right, right. <laughs> but still I'm gonna get through it. And hopefully Gumbate. like in a few months <laughs> yes. I'll have my license. <laughs> awesome. Gumbate, Gumbate. Is there a so, date for your exam though? Is there a date for your exam or no, it is no. There's like in two days we have like a school exam, mm -hmm. and if I pass that, I can take the actual exam. Oh, right, right, oh nice. Right. nice. Yeah. Well, root, rooting for you. Um, yeah. something else is going on very soon that um is sort of kind of coming to an end, and um I'm gonna Maria, honestly, I'm gonna let you take take this one over because I I'm not as well versed in it, but. Apparently, this little group in Korea, I, I something, eyes, yeah. eyes, 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 they're, they're, they're done. Like, oh my god, the time has come. Talk, talk about it, Maria. Go ahead. Shoot. We have like, what, eight days left on the 28th, I mm -hmm. think, is yeah. like the official day they are going to be disbanded. Oh, wow. And it's it's been a long ass ride. And, what, yeah. and it's like yeah. Sakura keeps throwing reality in our face like in the last episode of the radio show Sakura no Ki she oh. talked about how she has been packing things and Hitomi has oh. been helping her oh. send everything back wow. to Japan <laughs> and you know just That's really right. hammering it in we're going I'm going back to Japan I'm going oh wow no the thing that uh, stood to me the most and also kept me a bit going was her gaming channel basically she was playing little nightmares and it dawned on me like she was uploading a lot so it means like her activities as i saw it really must have come to an end because yeah. normally she's the, really busy and this entire month has been yeah basically totally free for them so you know she has had time to play the play the game and edit the videos and the like because it isn't as if in the past the word she was actually nice when she wasn't allowed to upload on on like you know her YouTube channel except maybe when they had the scandal you know and were oh, on hiatus right. yeah. mm -hmm. but because she did mention sometimes that she wanted to do it but she was you know just too busy so I guess now that she is uploading it just shows she's exactly. not busy yeah it's the, like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, have, have any of the girls made announcements as to what they're going to do post size one yet? Do we know anything? No. 
Nope, no announcements. Interesting. Although Unbi and Chewon have gone on, like, I think a fashion event together with oh. their company managers. So it's like, you know, they've already had schedules outside of Eyes 1, I guess. Mm-hmm. And there, but, there's, uh, there's, yeah, there's no chance that Eyes 1 can continue, correct? I mean, this is how it is zero. done in the case. Zero. Well, there's, yep, there is zero chance. Well, there would have been. There, essentially, the theory is that. The company and the girls were ex- were expecting to get an extension to the mm. time, but then right. like a few of the companies pulled out last minute. Oh wow! Which <laughs> is the reason why we have this one month of awkward space with no schedules uh, planned because wow. they were expecting to have more time, but they didn't. Ah, uh, what, Matt? What do you think about this? Uh, it's really weird, and you you can tell that there was something kind of off when Marie and I watched the final Eyes One concert. Mm-hmm. We watched uh-huh. both days together, and you could tell that it's like this isn't what they intended a final goodbye to be. It felt very disjointed and so incredibly sad. And even now, just everything being essentially silent the entire time post that, it's been really weird. And it's weird yeah. that it's been two and a half years. Imagine that. Crazy. That's oh, so wow. weird to think about. Like, yeah. you know? Like, it feels yeah. like what the other people were talking about. Like, their the whole journey of Eyes One and them and their first singles coming out. It's crazy to think it flew by so fast. DX, do you agree? Yeah, it was more like I still remember all of us watching the first episode of right? Produce 48 and raging on their editing to make the Japanese so bad yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so bad um, but, but but now in hindsight look what happened we have yeah. we, we did a good group we got exactly. a, a very wildly popular group didn't we so yeah, exactly. yeah. but like the one one funny thing that has come out of eyes when you know soon disbanding is that private mail is also gonna you know stop and fans are just they decided Screw the rules. They are posting all of the pictures that oh. have ever been archiving all of it, just posting all of the pictures that have nice. ever been posted on private mail. <laughs> they are going out on Twitter, out on Instagram, because it's like on 28th, it's going to end anyways. You know, what are you going to do to it? Yeah, true. Right. true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, normally it's just... just, yeah, normally it's a sin to upload uh, pictures right. from paid mail servers, basically. So, but since it's right. being anyway. <laughs> so, so, so I wanted to, I wanted to follow that by asking all three of you. Uh, we'll start with you, DX. Um, what do you think Eyes One's impact has been on the K-pop industry? Uh, to be honest, I don't think it's going to be that big of an impact. There was an impact, sure, but I think the impact was more of the world meeting the Japanese members from AKB48, and mm-hmm. in extension of that, the 48 group even with all its up and down, got more known worldwide because I've seen international fans checking out um, Tanaka Miku because she was her counterpart of Jabuki Nako. And, I've, uh, and at this point, members like Shiguma Meru, Mira Sesai are still popular with Korean and international fans. So it mm. has made a deep impact, I would say. So. Sure. And um, go ahead, Maria. For me, I'd say it's this isn't like just Eyes One, but I'd also say this is twice and Eyes One both. Is you can see a lot more Japanese idols in K-pop these days. It's mm-hmm. like just debuting in groups because you know Chinese idols have been in K-pop uh, since like what 2005, mm-hmm. but Japanese idols they are a lot rarer, which is well understandable considering the relationship Japan and Korea have. Yeah. But ever since like Twice and Eyes One, it's like you know more and more you see a rookie group has one or two you know Japanese members, and also Eyes One have the legacy. They they are a girl group, but their fandom is like one of a boy group fandom. If that mm-hmm. makes sense, I because in K mm-hmm. because in K pop. Girl groups tend to have like really good digital streams. They have really good like general public recognition. Mm-hmm. While boy groups might not have the general public recognition, but they have really big and strong fandoms that buy their albums and do all that. And I'd say Eyes One was more boy group like that way, you know. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. No, I like, like you know, that. Yeah, the general public, you know, they didn't 
that much care about them, but the fandom was big and really, really strong. Which, uh, <laughs> what about yeah. you? I mean, are you, are you still going to be a fan after? Are you still going to listen to their music oh. and, and cherish it? Oh, fuck. Sorry. God, it's yes. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Don't be careful, but it's okay. <laughs> It's been a while Amazing. since I recorded. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And, I'll, I'll for, and I'll forever stay waiting for a reunion because we are getting a reunion for IOI soon. Mm -hmm. so, oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, like they are having a live stream to like celebrate their five years oh. by going hmm. together. So I'll forever be waiting for Rise One to have that, you know, one day, hopefully. And. I'm just gonna miss them a lot, just all together. Like, mm -hmm. I I still go on the Lulu rant about how, like, oh, what if Hitomi joins? I don't know, Double M. And, uh, <laughs> and, I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I know it won't happen, but like, you know, my heart still hopes. <laughs> all right, and uh, how about you, Matt? What do you feel about all the situation and like their impact? Like, what do you think? I don't think I can speak to the impact they've had specifically on K-pop, but I do think that the importance of Eyes One of opening up eyes for at least J-pop idol fans and 48 idol fans to a bigger world of idol has been quite significant compared to we kind of all, all of us, at least us international fans, stayed in our bubble of just going, these are our 48 groups, they're the ones we stick to and we hang out with ourselves, and then suddenly we got this influx of so many new people who dragged us out of our bubble. For example, Maria, who keeps in informing me, <laughs> teaching me about K-pop all the time. Yeah, and it's been a good exchange in most of the time. Like, there's always been trouble, of course, but that it's the internet. What you're gonna do? True. Yeah, what are you gonna do? But they've been important well, oh. in lots of ways. And I'd like to add also, like, if you look on YouTube, like, a lot of the time, I'll often, like, with even the AKV videos, you see they have Korean titles or have yeah. titles in both Japanese oh, and Korean. And you, yeah. yeah, and you look in the comments and there are also a lot of Korean, Korean comments. Yeah. So I'd say well, yeah, J-pop with that got a lot more popular in Korea, especially. You know what? I, I'm I'm just gonna say for the record, and and before I even get into that, uh, the people who watch the show, tell us your thoughts on Eyes One, the impact, the memories. Uh, we welcome them in the comments. I know uh, it, it'll be fun to hear what you guys think. We've always supported Eyes One. I, me personally, I've never particularly gotten into a lot of their songs. Uh, every once in a while, there there was like a song I was like, oh, this is good. Their main songs, I I was never a fan of, but I like the girls a lot. Uh, Cheon was just, yeah. I mean, oh my mm -hmm. god, how many times me and you Maria did we nerd out on right. watching Taeyeon dance videos and like and so it's like I really love the fact that for a moment Korea and Japan could drop the BS and just come together in a musical spirit that I feel can show us as people not to get all cheesy but show us that we can all be together in a united way with common interests and like yeah. that is the importance of Eyes One at the end of the day I mean they're not the first group to do something like this but they're certainly one of the most recognized groups in the modern age to do it and especially in the idol world and they transcended that idol barrier even almost to just be recognized as artists and and I think that is exceptional and I also feel to watch our little girls in AKB transform into K-pop goddesses. I mean, Sakura, you told me, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it's yeah. just like brain blown, you know, like, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, you know, I remember watching Sakura Tan, you know, trying to dribble a basketball and shooting in a hoop on a, a variety show in Japan and sailing misery or her running, you know? <laughs> yeah. <that's> uh, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> they are going to return to variety shows just armed with one more weapon that is that, that is the fact that they can rub into everybody's faces that they are now bilingual. And there's that yeah. too. And then yeah. not only that, oh, yeah, like yeah, we're just gonna yeah, we're gonna pick up you know Korean. It's it's not like it's a difficult language or anything. I mean, it's just like oh my god, like just the growth, the evolution. Um, even though that 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 lack of growth was really horribly edited to to seem way worse than it is in the context of the Eyes One show when it yeah. began, it served its purpose. Because now, it, it, if anything, it, it helped our brains allow us to see the evolution to be this overwhelming evolution. But you know what? At the end of the day, it was. 
It really like they did something good. So uh, we will miss Eyes One. I think collectively, I think we all can say that uh, we we love the members, and I wish them all the best. And I I cannot wait to see what they all do yeah. next. Yeah, same. And it's also like the way I think I fell in love with the group because I I wouldn't say I love Eyes One because they are the group from Produce Forty Eight because it's like. With any other lineup, there is no guarantee that I would love them as much as I love them mm, now. Because yeah. it's like even when I look at the members, it's like here one was the member who I liked the least going like when I was on debut. I uh, she was the member I thought like why why is she here? But like mm. with each passing day, even I fell more and more mm. in love with her, and now she's mm. like my third favorite member after Cheyenne and hit on me, you know. And it's wow. like, it really hit me, like, during their last concert, she said, like, when she had her time to speak, she said, like, I always felt that I wasn't enough. And, like, that was the thing that hit me, like, the hardest when she said that I cried like a baby. I cried mm. like a baby mm. throughout the whole time they were talking, honestly, mm. like, yeah. saying yeah. their final words. And when she said, like, I always felt like I wasn't enough, I, I just wanted to scream yeah. scream out loud, like, you were always enough. I was the one who was blind and didn't see it at the beginning, you know? Mm. Like, it, it's the others who are stupid, not not you not being enough. And well, that, that and, and to add to what you just said and to maybe put a cap on this as well, because I think it'd be a good place to, to do that. Um, we get into idols to watch them grow and develop, but you want them at the end to understand what they did really was an evolution and they should recognize it for themselves because idol that's what makes idol so special it's not just about being a musician on stage i mean anybody that's that, that can play music can do that but idol has that little extra something where the fans get to support you as they watch you go from not perfect to perfect the interesting experiment about eyes one is the imperfect akb girls we're heading into a perfect world of K-pop, but yet the K-pop girls that were at the pro, you know during the Produce Forty Eight, they weren't necessarily all perfect either, and they yeah, had to exactly. grow too. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I really like that because yeah. every time we see a K-pop group, they've had years of training before they're even making their debut. And here we're watching these girls literally grow as they're training to make their debut. Wow! So it was, it was very yeah. powerful stuff. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. very good. Yeah. Very and it's. Mm -hmm. Like this is talking more about artists in general. It's like even in K-pop where the skills are really important. It's not like the skills are everything. Every group has that one member who is, you know, not that good at singing, not that good at dancing, but that doesn't make them any less valuable or good as an idol. Sure, mm. they're not as good as dancers, no. they're not as good as a singer, exactly. but they can be the best idol mm. out of all of them. Yeah, I, I literally was just having this conversation with an idol about like an hour ago. Uh, this idol was telling me that she felt she wasn't attractive enough to be an idol. And I'm like, shut your mouth. Like, you were like, first of all, she's gorgeous. So she, I don't know if she's just <laughs> yeah, not yeah. looking at her or what, but like, she felt like she's not like she's like i i gotta do more i gotta be better and i think i think unfortunately and correct me if i'm wrong Matt and and maria i'm a guy but i think sometimes girls put that pressure on themselves unnecessarily in that sense maybe like they think oh i'm the world won't accept me as i am or something i don't know is that is that a girl honestly, thing too would you say? honestly i'd say that's a human thing mm. which a human I'd, thing. Ah. which i'd say appears more some i'd say maybe appears more in girls because girls are pressured more to look pretty and good mm -hmm. but i'd say sure. this isn't exclusive to just women but it's just i think anybody can feel not good enough it's more sure. you know a matter of self-esteem and the like well put, well put. Um, so, Eyes One, you will be missed. We loved you. Thank you for the memories. And uh, we will, of course, support you and whatever you do. And fans of the show, please give us your comments, your questions, all that. Moving on. Uh, I wanted to talk, uh, completely rewinding, uh -huh. because uh, really, we didn't we did really have a whole lot of news to discuss this week. Um, just because of everything going on in everybody's lives and, and of, of course, the current situation with with DX, uh, I felt like it might be cool to kind of go backwards and be a little nostalgic. Because mm -hmm. I don't know about you, nostalgia always makes me feel better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if anything, it also brings me back to a different time where maybe it wasn't what it's like now where we're in the midst of a pandemic that's basically wrecked our world. Um, I, 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 and, and this is particularly a, a moment that I was thinking about recently um, because somebody recently has been uploading on YouTube a lot of AKB videos of like concert footage that's all subbed. Like um, 
like when uh, the girls have the MC portions or they're having the big announcements at AKB Dome concerts where, you know, Tokazaki comes out and, uh, oh, I don't oh, know. And it's, everyone's like, oh, no, oh, no. Yeah, like, stuff it's, like, <laughs> it's all been getting subbed, and uh, God bless the people that are doing that. Um, and so recently, I, I just happened to see one, and I want to know your guys' thoughts on this, too, um, about the 2012, you know, huge announcement where um, – Matsuri Drina was announced as Team K Kennen and and uh, Milky uh, was announced. Uh, who did she go to? Ask was it SK? Who where where did she go? Team B, I think. Um, I think Team B. Yeah. I think Team B. Along, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and I remember seeing you know of course the girl like Drina just you know falling. Everybody yeah. thought she was done. Milky looked dead, either dead or just completely didn't understand anything that was going on and. Um, Apparently, what happened was the way Togasaki had worded it was like he was saying they were completely transferring. There wasn't. Oh, a canon. right, right. And afterwards, it was like, oh, you're canon. They they felt a little more relieved, but still freaking out. And then I remember afterwards there was some behind the scenes footage. I want to say of Matsuri Jirina, like she was like in the like the little hospital area ba- backstage, mm. like hyperventilating, going yeah. nuts, like she couldn't handle it. And I remember Milky was just classic Milky, like trying to internalize, you know, but. I remember feeling I'm watching this thinking here are these girls on stage in front of thousands and thousands of fans all going nuts. I mean, the drama, the, the, the power, little Takamina doing her little thing and Yuko and Achan and like all these giants of the idol world at that time. And it was like the drama and, and, and everything was so big at that time. I wonder if we're ever going to get back to something like that in the current AKB world or just in general with like the idol world. And so I want to know two things from each of you guys. One is your thoughts on that moment. And two, what do you think about the question I'm proposing? Are we going to get back to that? And if so, like who and what do you think? Let's start with Met this time. Go ahead. Um, so I actually watched that video not that long ago. Oh, cool. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Because uh, I was in, and I was in a horrible downward spiral watching uh, Atsan's graduation concert. Mm. Just being. Oh, uh, oh wow! Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm oh wow! <laughs> just Not good. being sad, and yeah, it, the tension, the passion, and just the feeling of everyone being so invested in it. It was such a great mm. moment, even if it's really sad and confusing for the girls at the time. And I think. Mm finding that again I think the closest thing for me at least because I, I'm not sure if AKB is going to go there ever again with the current way they were doing mm. things because you have there have been those scandals that have been there recently, members leaving or qu- uh, quitting or being forced to quit, we don't know and then suddenly now just began silence, it's been over a year since the single, how are you going to build up a group to go back to Tokyo Dome if that's where you are. Mm-hmm. But for me, a group that does that still is BNK and CGM. Mm-hmm. Because they have those core members who are the giants in the first generation and also a few in the second generation. And one day, the third generation, once we get to know them better. And if you go back, actually, it's yesterday, it was a year since Jane won the general election. Yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It was the anniversary for her victory. And if you go back and look at her reaction to that, the internet's reaction, or like BNK Twitter, it was insane because she upset and took the first place from the one everyone thought was going to win. Which one? It was Chaprang, of course. (laughs) Of course, of course. That was upset of all upsets but go ahead but not for me because i was crying out of happiness at the time because uh, uh, people yeah. who know me know that i've been following jane and chapran since the get-go in when they debuted and it was just when you look at the reactions to that just post that it was insane that was like having yuko winning her first election oh yeah that, that was crazy when she yeah. did oh my god <laughs> well okay but but I got a question for you, if I can interject real quick. What is the biggest venue in Thailand, like, as um, far as for a group to play? The, as far as I know, it's the one that I went to. Huh? I wish I don't remember the name of, but it's the one <laughs> where they had the Asia Festival. If oh, we were thinking, um, I think that's the one. But I don't remember okay. what it's called. But it's really okay. big. 
I'm asking because I, I want to know if BNK can reach those kind of like Tokyo Dome level heights with their fans. I don't even know if there is that many fans in Thailand for them, but I'm curious. I think they can. Well, they did for the... I'm not sure if this was also the effect of the Asia Festival, but they did the election in 2019, the one I went to. Oh, right. And then they did... The first day was the election concert, Space Mission, and then they did the election at night. Two separate events. Mm-hmm. Full. Completely full. Oh, wow. Just people wow. everywhere. Oh, nice. And then they had the Asia Festival the next, next day. So Beautiful. I'm not sure if it's just Thai fans, but it was also international fans coming in for the Asia Festival. And th- there's a reason why Thailand was the first place to hold an Asia Festival. Why is that? And- well, I think they had the most uh, space and fans to gather into it. I'm feeling like I'm judging JKT now and I'm not. I'm sure they would <laughs> be able to have it one day once Corona is gone. But like, Thailand was the best suited place and has been for a few years or two years now as the sister group in international space to be noticed. They've done a lot. They've gathered a lot of attention. So... Ah, one, yeah, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, yeah, I, I have to agree with you, actually. Uh, I, I think Thailand was a, a beautiful place for an Asia music festival, and um, especially to celebrate, you know, BNK's wildly absurd contributions on the level we never thought. I mean, I who would have thought, you know, but they've done so well. So I'm very proud of them. And the other sister groups will do too. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind if they just, they just got to persist. So very good. Um, Ria, go ahead. For me, I, it's really hard to really, oh, I mean, my mind is, my mind is away from them. Okay, well, the easy. thing, yeah, yeah, the thing really is, like, I can't really say it, but I was like, in 2012, I wasn't around as a fan back then. I was sure. what? 10, 11. I was 11 years old back then, you know? <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> I, you know, I wasn't around back then. But I'd say as if it was, as for it to be possible again, I'd say for that, there would have to be a routine in the group, you know? There would have to be a consistent routine that, because, you know, the reason those things were so shocking because they broke the routine, the pattern, they were unexpected. Mm. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Uh, she froze. Ah, I, think. I think she froze. I think she froze. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's it's our show. It wouldn't be a yeah. show without. Yeah, it, it was her turn to get it. You know, yeah, so exactly. <laughs> no, but she'll come. Back. She'll come back. Well, just give yeah. it time. Then. So, yeah, we'll give it some time. I was actually, uh, I was actually going to say that. Um, I feel that uh, it it it's just not. I'm not sure if it can happen on that kind of a dramatic level. I guess the mm. WAC groups, you know, might be able to do it, like Bish and stuff. Mm. Um, speaking of that, interestingly enough, um, Kashiwagi Yuki Yukiren yeah. has officially mm. joined with them. And yeah, has, wow. like, what, I saw that. Did you guys watch that video? I, I watched that video. Those oh. WAC members were like, what, what, what are you serious? What, what, what? <laughs> it was so funny to see, actually. <laughs> oh, so good. I, I was enjoying it so much, and uh, it was very cool to watch. And... Um, Oh, her, her, she said her internet's gone. Uh, oh, it's okay. okay. It's, it's right. okay. You know. Um, yeah, well, just, we'll just tell her here real quick. No worries. Hold on. No worries. Well, that's yeah. okay. Uh, just give but, it time. But, like, yeah, like, um, I, I thought, like, okay, like, I mean, Bish, Bish has always tried to be, Bish and Bish have always tried to be super dramatic with everything. Watanabe's son's really got a flair for that. Um, so I guess on that, I mean, they, they have, like, you know, Bish and them, I think they filled some of the domes, not Tokyo Dome, but they filled, uh, I want to say they filled Yokohama Stadium. They filled Budok, or I don't think they played Budokan, but Yokohama, I mm-hmm. want to say. So, I mean, if they can do that, Tokyo Dome is not that far out of the reach, but That's it right. would be interesting. So yeah, oh she's gone. Yeah. Okay, well okay. we lost Maria, but that's that's unfortunate. But um, she can come back. She will. Um, I'm gonna skip, I guess, for now, and then go right to you, DX, and ask you first of all your thoughts about that moment, and then do you think anyone else can can accomplish that now, and if so, who? Uh, go ahead and take it away. Uh, to be honest, uh, as far as that moment from the Canon being announced even though it wasn't that clear to it it was like even myself at the time was like why would they transfer fully transfer but no. after rewatching it I was like ah Kenneth that makes a lot more sense but still I can't imagine Jorina being shook to the core because she thought 
everything she built up with SKE was going to be uh, under someone else's guidance, basically. But later, she, when yeah. she found out, it was just a cannon, so she was basically like a dual member. She was like, oh. yeah. you could see some sense of release, but still she was shaken to the core, basically. And as far as the 48 group being able to fill up a Tokyo Dope again, I'm not sure, to be quite honest. It's more like... Uh, back then, uh, during the first uh, run, basically from 2005 till like 2012, it took them quite a bit to reach that status level again. And right yeah. now, uh, the group itself have been reset. Even the <laughs> even the billboards at Don Quixote are gone. They have been replaced with Genshin oh, Impact crazy. billboards. Basically, you only see. Oh, great. It's more like the whole has been resetted basically and uh, the current uh, general manager Mion, she has a lot on her plate to reach uh, to reach that status again basically and to be quite honest it's going to take them a while because back then it took them about 7 years I think before they were able to do the Tokyo Dome concerts and I have a feeling it might be a tra trajectory like that again to be quite honest because it's not easy to build from scratch because you have to remember AKB is back in its scratch stage, so they have to build up. They have to build up the new KB7 basically. They have to have regular media appearances, so yeah. not YouTube, but like regular television in Japan itself. And they really need some at least a weekly exposure in some sort of a variety show because right now most of the known members are pretty much gone. The only one really known right now are Mion, Ogure Yui and Okada Nana basically. So yeah. there's a lot of work to be done. And I hope they well, can do it though. I I hope they can do it though. Yeah. What's up? Well I watched I watched the uh the new the new AK Bingo Neo and it was fantastic. And yeah. um yeah. what a throwback and, and I had a blast watching and I'm like, oh my god, I miss this so much. And um that's a start, you know. Get let's bring back what we love about AKB. That's a start. I just it needs to be a little more regular than I guess what they're planning, right? But Yeah, because yeah. right now it's like every like month or Two and three months or something mm. like that every uh, once per season or something like that so it's more like they need way more exposure than that because right now it's yeah. not stable I would say well let, let me break it down though here so like you know um, and I agree with that, everything you guys said all, both of you um, and what Maria was starting to say um, like I you know being that I live here and stuff I was able to for my documentary I did a little bit on my documentary one, one the, the first episode I want to say or second I can't remember. Um, I did well. One of the episodes, I I went and I actually filmed that the the front of the AKB theater a bunch, and and I just remember sitting standing out in front of that and thinking like I was at this theater in 2012 or so, wishing I could somehow figure out a way to to get inside and knowing no Japanese and no friends really to help me. I it was just a dream, you know. And but then then I saw oh they took like the you know they were they took down. The, the the famous you know the, those you know, the AKB you know, you know the billboard science, yeah the science yeah it just it's mind blowing to think I was filming that last year you know because it's so culturally important but then I started thinking well you know they took away the cafe when you come yeah. out of Akihabara Electric Town exit yeah there you know before there was a cafe waiting to greet you and now it's Gundam and don't get me wrong nothing against Gundam Gundam's awesome I don't think you need it to be as big and wide as it is now but um it was doing fine when it was just the little Gundam cafe on the side of the AKB cafe but you know you take away something like that and it's like I don't think they understood they didn't just take away a cafe they took away a a hall full of memories that will yeah. last. For many people, like for me, you know, bringing Meech on there when she was just a little little kid, and like I remember, we'd always get this one booth, you know, and like the Kojiharo Ko Kojiharo had like something signed in a glass case, and Meech would always just fuck, or well, she would always just, like, bah, you know, try to break yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? She's, like trying to take it off. Then she'd run in the back hall, and the back hall there all the 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 girls' portraits in front of the bathrooms, which I never quite understood that, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, and then, you know, Michan, Michan trying to, like, grab the portraits and, like, you know, like, who's that? Who's that? I'm like, yeah, I don't even know how to explain it to you. And then 
she would go we would go there so often once we started to stay here that like she had a little like an ocean man like this guy was always there and he started to recognize her and then like Mitan's Oshman is Marco Shinoda. She loves Marco. And so this guy would bring her Marco Shinoda um little like um cards and stuff and oh, um, right, right. Mm-hmm. it was just really cool, you know. And then I remember, you know, when in the theater part of the cafe, um the the you know, Mitan was invited up on stage to do like uh, one of their games and the girls at the cafe treated her so well. All the fans were so nice. They were they were clapping for her. She won the game, of course. Oh, and of course. Mitan, it was just beautiful. It was like it was amazing to watch her do that. That's all gone now. You know, they're gonna do it again. And so yeah. like they don't understand that like you can't do that to fans of idols. Like it's like these places are sacred shrines. Like they shouldn't I'm hoping that they'll bring back everything if they're going to do AKB again. But here's the big thing I was trying to get to. In order to really reach those heights again, I think it's going to happen after the pandemic is over, if AKB is still around. I mean, they're on life support now. But I think the fans are going to be so overwhelmed about being able to pile into a venue. It's going to – that's going to do it for them. Like – I guarantee you if AKB announced a Tokyo Dome concert the day after a pandemic, like, people could go do mm-hmm. Tokyo Dome concerts, they'd sell it out. And, and it wouldn't even matter. It wouldn't even matter who was in because, honestly, everybody here is, like, itching for all this to be done. And, you know, in Japan, they keep flip-flopping between state of emergency, quasi-state emergency, no emergency, sometimes emergency. We're not sure what emergency even is. And every mm. single one of those measures, they're only asking bars to close at 8 and, like, restaurants. That's it. And it's like, oh, wow. wow, that's really going to do a lot of good for the vampire virus. So it's like <laughs> so much confusion, so much anger at the government. And then all they care about is getting these Olympics going. But it's like the the cases of corona keeps going up and up and up and up recently, especially in Osaka. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's it's time to, like, do something legit about the issue here. Because Japan has been spared for the most part. Like, you know, our total death count here is like one day's death count in Brazil or something. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, wow. Yeah, for, I gotcha. Mm-hmm. It's like for the whole year, it's been barely anybody. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's like yeah, we've yeah. only had like 500 some thousand cases out mm-hmm. of 126 million people that live in this whole country. Oh, wow. That's, I mean, we've been spared. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, it's like not for long. No, and exactly. it just keeps getting. Like, like, no one wants to think about idols and AKB and all that. But I feel AKB's got to remember who they are, put out the music right now. It's ne- it's needed more than now than ever. Because what do idols do for us? Yeah, they make escape. us happy. Yeah, they forget about them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they make us escape, you know. And this would be the best time to just make us all be shouting and cheering for joy the best way they know how. Just be idols. Just go do idol stuff. Have idol fun. Let's be silly. Like, we need it now more than ever. So I don't think everybody here is quite realizing that but if once the pandemic is run its course i feel there will be a surge in idol now i don't know if akb is going to be leading that charge i almost feel it's going to be the chica idols it's going to be like bish and mm. well bish is not chica anymore like it, it's, they're mainstream at this point but like groups like that mm. it's going to mm. get insane i think it's going to get real crazy so i don't know it, it was just interesting because i was thinking about that concert i was watching matsuri jina and milky and, and just all the reactions i'm thinking that's that was dramatic that was what was on everybody's mind not a pandemic not all this other stuff and like back then that it was so intense like you said matt like the the emotion was it was intense and yeah. like I'm, I'm watching it and i've seen it a million times i i you know and i'm still like oh my god like you just feel it, you know? And then mm. to add to the, that, the documentaries, you know, where we could see behind the scenes. And, yeah, wow. Well, yeah. Especially well, the behind the scenes, the stress, the oh. tension. It's just more like... It's crazy. Yeah. Like, do you guys remember, like, the the one documentary where, like, they did, uh, what was it? The, was it the Cebu Dome or whatever? And all the girls were out of breath. Yeah, the, the Cebu, yeah. Uh, G, uh, the Cebu Dome, I think, yeah. Um, yeah. You saw, the, you saw the girls going all out in, even though they were down basically they still want to go go on basically because if they're down who's going to continue the show basically and that I, yeah wow. and getting yeah. airbags in between sets and I, I, it's unreal it was unreal like those girls like like they said the inter- one girl said the inter- they pulled out all the stops they, it's like the brakes came off and like 
they were like like i i like remember watching that and getting like nervous and like tense and i was crying and i'm like oh my god you know like because these girls i thought they were gonna die i really mm. thought one of them were gonna die like but they were so committed to it and that looking back i mean i i i don't know if i would have done anything different as them i think i would have gone even harder because but it was just like to see yuko like out of breath like she was that's a, that's an image that, that is hard to to release when you think about Idol and you think about how far AKB had to get to go from Cebu to Tokyo Dome to, you know, the forever supreme queens of the entire Idol universe forever and ever. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and it's, it, it's hard to see them now on life support barely inching by when back then... There used to be some big... Were, yeah. Wow. Oh my God, you know? Like... It's so so. I I am wondering about that, and it's like it's interesting again to get uh, nostalgic and watch the stuff on YouTube when it randomly pops up in the queue. You know, yeah, you so, said yeah. that you were watching Atan. Well, I was, yeah, because <laughs> those things keep popping up in my recommended section, and I, I oh, was like, right, right. Yeah. oh, mm-hmm. you know what? I want to listen to Atan sing again. Did not mm. think about what song it was. Started clicking, and it's you in the car. Yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I was crying. Oh, yeah, man. same. No. It was more like uh, the current members don't have the stage presence. Uh, they don't have the stage presence like a Yuko had or a, a- Achan had. No. Even no. on their own, they could f- feel uh, they could feel the stage, even if there was just one person. Like. Even if it was just only Oshima Yuko, even if it was only like Mayu, or even if it's only like Achan, those were people that had the aura that it was so big they could do it on their own basically. And I uh, to pull uh, back to what we we're talking about during the K-pop uh, topic we we're talking about, you could really feel like the Korean girls they had the training, they had the synchronization on point. But they lacked mm. stage presence. They lacked aura, yeah. and yeah. that's something you can only build up if you are actually on stage and not training in a classroom. Yeah. Well, you you nailed it. You nailed it. Um. And then again, to know how far those girls travel, like when you're watching like an Achan's graduation, like those first moments with her on stage, and like you know all that, like when they showed like the VTR, and you're just yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Exactly. Especially in the documentary, like No Flowers Without Rain. And yeah. you're just like the way they did that when she when they come out for Sakura no Hanabere Tachi and like you can Michan just falls to the ground, she can't even get up and you and then you can't like come on, come on. like she is <laughs> that's typical you can instead of embracing her, she's like, she's like uh, uh, it's like trying to touch a puppy, you're not sure it's yeah. gonna bite you or not. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's so funny, and then you know you have other girls just willing to embrace you and love you, and like, and but 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 the one thing you notice, right, was it was a sisterhood. Yeah, and these girls were they were bonded, and that bond does it exist today when we're we're doing this on our phones every three seconds, and it's like those girls they had that, but not quite. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't exactly. as like this. I mean, it was there, of course. They it was a phone culture, but nowadays it's you're you know. Yeah, you're You'd playing. Like, yeah, mm-hmm, exactly. You know, and it's a little different. You know, so very interesting. But I am curious to see, you know, if if AKB or any of these groups can can rise to that level again. Um, we we need a we need a leader. We need somebody. Do you guys have any idea if, if you could vote in a particular member mm-hmm. of an idol, any idol group at this point, mm-hmm. to kind of lead the charge of idol back into our general thinking where we're thinking about a lot. Anybody come to mind? Either. So, if I could bring in someone who doesn't speak Japanese that much, uh-huh. but I think AKB, if she wanted to, music from BNK going in there, mm-hmm. I, she would have the charisma, she has the character, the personality, and mm. the love for Idol to go full in and just become that ace person for a group like AKB. Put her in Team B, let her be there a year or something, mm-hmm. and then put her up in Sambatsu, and she would just shine as an idol. Oh, mm-hmm. that would be amazing. Oh, she is an idol. idol. Yeah. Yeah, she is. She would really shine, mm-hmm. you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. Like, just, lights. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. She posted a cover of uh, uh, Marigold. It's a Japanese artist song. I don't remember her name, but go look at that, and you know what? I think you'll see... And you can see from ev- pretty much everything she's done ever, she is 
a, could be an amazing Japanese idol personality mm. ace for AKB if they wanted to do something like taking a canon system again. Mm. Nice. Well, well, well BNK, you know, I mean, those girls seem to understand the Japanese framework of what they're trying to do with idol. They understand the the history of it. I, I mean, they, I see a lot of them really getting it, you know, mm. and yeah. so... I, I could totally agree with you there. If music were to be integrated over here and like really given that chance, oh man, the, the just what... Mizuki, and tell me you won't yeah. fall in love with her because she's just yeah. so good. Mm -hmm. She's great. Yeah, exactly. She's great. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. DX? Uh, for me, uh, to be honest, if someone were to lead the charge and to take on the Takamina role and lead the charge forward, I would say the current manager of CGM is Rina. What she has oh, done, yeah. what she basically has done, she built two groups, uh, BNK and CGM, and made them into powerhouses, basically. She's in Wow, I didn't incredible. even think of that. Uh, well, wow. even just look at her style from what she's doing with CGM. Now, all the CGM members, except when there's not a pandemic going on, they have to be in their respective homes. Yep. They live together. And that was a conscious de decision for management and her because they wanted to build that sisterhood exactly. bond between wow. members. So my choice would be Isarina because she has basically proven herself in Thailand. I would say let her try it in Japan and bring the group uh, back up to scratch since she already has a past. She already knows how it works. But now give her a position of power and make her give her her own style and towards her own vision, I would say. So that's my pick. But you can't have her. We need her still. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to that... have her. Sorry. No. That she is, has kids that is... in Thailand now. Ah, there you go. There you go. Um, is Arena? Wow. Who I mean, would you even have thought to say that in like four or five years ago? Exactly. Never. Exactly. But wow. Now I Good would thought. say give her that Takamina role, and I am pretty sure she can bring back AKB to its former glory, since she basically gives CGM and BNK their current glory. I would say so. Mm, very, 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 very cool. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, there, there is definitely a lot of candidates in the Chica world I can think of, but um, on the AKB level, I think you guys know. I, I, yeah, I mean, is Arena? Geez, I didn't even think of that, but you're right. Um, she's definitely got the charisma. I think you, Karen, if she wanted to, she could. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think we all love and respect her. She's still, she's the last, last one, last man standing. Um, yeah. you know. And, um, you know, with Jarena out, it's just, you know, it really is on her. And um, it, it's like I could see her saying, you know what, I ain't, I'm not giving up. And and I think everybody would be really cool with that. But I also feel like, again, the Chica world has so many good candidates and so many super charismatic idols. You can't smart enough to realize that's why she started to go towards that realm. Although, again, Bish is not Chica, but they were. Uh, I guess at one point, maybe for two seconds. This was definitely, I mean, they started the whole thing. Yeah. But I would say, like, it, it, it's just, there's so many that I think, I think, like, if the girls on the major idol level wanted a crash course on how to do it, come to the Chica world and learn, and then use what you learn there to bring back to the major. But again, a lot of the major girls are all hamstrung by management. It's everything's controlled to the point where it's like they really do have to do whatever management suggests. Versus in the Chica world, I, I feel a lot of those girls have a lot of say in what's being done. At least according, at least a lot of the girls that I'm around, a lot of the girls that I'm with, they're self-managed, so it's like they really just decide their past. Um, but yeah, I, I could, I could totally, I could see some of these girls just really crushing it if they were given that flag to to wave, but. Either way, it's a, it was just a fun, interesting little thing that I thought was kind of cool mm -hmm. to think about. Because, I again, we just have so many good rem memories. I mean, you know, going to shows, all three of us, you know, we've been to shows. And it's just, you know, that, that feeling, that, that, that good, that intensity. And, AK, and that's, that's the one thing, that's the one thing I don't think a lot of people who have never seen AKB Live really understand. These girls live are unbelievable. Yep. It is. Uh, yep. Yep. It's a show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is like overwhelmingly powerful. 
and I've had the privilege to see him many times, like in big stadium type things and um and handshake events. Um, you you know DX, you yeah, saw exactly the SK, uh, I saw you saw SK. your girlfriend, right? mm-hmm. yeah, like met with uh, BNK. Like it's just oh, AKB too. I've seen oh, every yeah, international right. Mr. Booth except yeah. TDM. Oh wow, that's, and that's yeah. awesome. That's amazing. Like that's amazing. I don't think people understand when you hear the, you know, AKB, the yeah, overture. Ooh. The overture, the good old overture. Yeah. That, gives you, that makes you hype, basically. Yeah. The, the energy that just was, just comes barreling out of everybody, thousands of people. <sighs> You're just like, oh my God. Like, it's, it is just on a level I can't even begin to explain. And it's like, I've, I've experienced it to some degree in the Chica world at, cer- at certain shows. I've seen it like on a massive like it's like packing forty thousand people into a room of two hundred people with the energy, like the intensity. Mm-hmm. I've been to shows where it's so intense. You felt you just didn't you never wanted to leave, but you had to leave because if you didn't, you were gonna explode. You were literally gonna just yeah. spontaneously come <laughs> off. Mm-hmm. But because it was too crazy. But AKB, when that overture hits, man, I mean I, I feel lucky in my life that I've you know, I've I've been able to experience that overture several times and like in big event halls and stuff, uh, and it's just yeah. it's better, you know. Mm-hmm, exactly. Like really, so yeah. No, for me, you know, for me, the mm-hmm. I was actually fortunate enough to visit AKB in the Tokyo Dome concert in 2014. Uh, back the then the theme oh. uh, back then the theme was you're not allowed to announce your graduation, and yep. just being there and getting riled up with all the fans, it's more like it's something I really miss and. Once that mm. pandemic ends, I just I just want to return to those shows and such. Yeah, like like you went to 2014 Tokyo Dome. Wasn't that where they had the hot air balloons flying around? Yep, they, that was that oh, concert. That was so yeah, cool. that was so cool. I was like, wow, mm. what? The, how did they even get those in there? Basically, it was like, I mean, hot air balloons in a stadium. I mean, come on, it's just and and the girls are just going nuts. Everyone's going crazy. It's like yeah, you just and AKB, you got. 200 something girls just running around everywhere going crazy some yep. are in the stands <laughs> like, it's just they're everywhere it's like you know zombie attack but idol attack it's just crazy but it's like I I think we all need collectively as a civilization and humanity to get back to things like that you know like we really do because those memories like you know and I, I've seen perfume in the Tokyo Dome and that was an experience unlike anything I've ever I mean wow you know just that that kind of Wow, just you're just you're just blown away. Like there are nowhere. Or I've seen Utada Hikaru in uh, Saitama, and Saitama Arena is freaking huge. And yeah. like to see her, and like it's just you know those those type of big events. Even when and then you know it makes the drama on stage even bigger too. You know, yeah, exactly. It's still, I don't know. I, I I want. I just thought it was fun to relive that. I encourage everybody who's watching and letting us go down nostalgia lane here to do the same and um. Definitely would like to hear more about that. Um, but for now, we're going to wrap up because that was a lot. And uh, we definitely killed an hour. And then also, I think uh, Maria can't come back. Um, her internet basically just decided to say, nope, not anymore. And oh, uh, so, so unfortunate, yeah. So it just happens yeah. you know, technical difficulties it, because it wouldn't be this show if something were wouldn't be, out, basically. Yeah. Um, but, but Maria, thank you for being with us when you were. Um, we'll have to pick up conversation with her next time. And uh, again, um, we hope she's okay. Oh, she's okay, but just her internet's not okay. Her internet side just go, you know, just disappear. But okay. Well, anyways, uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, before we close up, I want to ask for recommendations, all the usual. Uh, Matt, what do you recommend uh, for our fans and mm. just in general? So tomorrow, it, this was announced today actually, but CDM uh-huh. is going to release like a sitcom oh, on okay. their YouTube channel. Ooh. I think it's twice a week even. So Ooh, first episode nice. goes up tomorrow. So check that out. And Subtitle? CDM, uh, it's some dorm something. No, okay. no, it doesn't okay. have subtitles yet, I think. Okay. I think maybe some fans are going to explain the jokes yeah. on Twitter. Right, but, right, right. Uh, CDM is doing an SNS takeover, so you'll find every day this week members being on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, doing one hour of just whatever they want, which is a bunch yeah. of weird stuff. And BNK <laughs> also has a SNS takeover thing, but I'm not sure if they were done with it yet or if it's over this week. 
So, you know, keep your eyes out for your favorite. Maybe you can talk to her on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Wow, it's amazing. Great. Okay, very good. And uh, DX, you go. Um, I don't really have much recommendations, but I do want to have some closing words. So, Derek, if you uh, want. Okay. Let, me, let, me, let me go first and then you can close, okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I just have a couple things for for starters. Uh, I you know I've been going through a lot too, but um, I, we can say that for another time. Uh, I wanted to say uh, please check out my documentary, The Flowers of Passion. It is available uh, streaming on Gumroad.com. Um, all five episodes. You can also purchase the DVD at Idol Underworld. Um, it's a five disc set, and um, I am shipping out. At, well, they're all they've all been shipped out now. Um, I have posters, I have bromide sets. Um, so, you know, if you want to, if you want a, a deeper look into the Chica Idol world or just the idols in general, um, I would encourage you to check it out. I really busted my butt to make it. So did the girls that were in it. Everybody, you know, contributed and, uh, it would be nice to see, uh, that, that be checked out. So hopefully we can leave a link in the description, DX, if that's okay. It's okay. Um, thank you. And then the other thing I want to say, uh, two things is one is, Go check out some of these nostalgic pieces, man. There, there is somebody is blessing us all by literally going on a subfest run, and just it, it's just I'm seeing more and more of these popping up, and um, you know they're gonna get taken down fast, so you might as well yeah. check them yeah. before that happens. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, see if you don't know Japanese and you want it, you finally want to know what Togasaki was saying in that moment. You can go find out right now. And um, there's also a couple other things that we're that they've I've been seeing. There's something like a lot more like Dokiri type stuff with idols. Like um, mm -hmm. there was one recently with Kawaii Arena that was on that was really funny, and I don't even get into it, but it, it's really funny and just um, you know, go 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 check out all that. Get, you know, give yourself a smile in this in these times. And then the other thing is too is um, if uh, if you can. Uh, definitely, 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 um, you know, uh, do something nice for somebody. And uh, I know that sounds really cheesy, but what I mean is it's like, you know, remember our time on this planet's, you know, very limited. And uh, I think it's important to let people know that you care about them. I've had a lot of people let me know that they care about me in my past couple weeks of dealing with a bunch of BS. Um, even doing this today has is, is, just been so much fun to just forget about everything for a minute. Um, and really, we need to do that more. So uh, I encourage you guys to do that. Again, not to end on a super cheese ball note. Uh, it's just right now that kind of thing is super necessary for us because it reminds us that we're human and we're going to get through all this stuff and the world is hurting as it is doesn't have to be as gloomy as it is because we have idols we have each other and it's going to be all right and i i gotta believe that in my heart of hearts i hope you guys do too and i'm gonna let dx give us some parting words because i know he has something to say and it's important so i want you guys to really listen to that too i'm out go ahead dx okay for the fans listening to this podcast please take good care of your loved ones even mm. if you haven't talked to them in a long time please just contact or talk to them because before you know it they can be gone and I don't want any of the listeners having to go through what I went through yesterday because quite simply put just keep yourself on any prevention measures be it social distancing getting vaccinated or even if you have the possibility of vaccination please do it as fast as you can because if you don't, everyone's saying COVID isn't that bad. It's it's just like a flu or something like that. No, it really isn't. I really had a yin and yang feeling because my uncle and my aunt, they both got infected at the same time. And I remember celebrating with my uncle. He conquered COVID. He, oh, he won from COVID. Only to have, to have the news the next day that my aunt wouldn't make it. And mm -hmm. yesterday was the funeral. Everything was serene, peaceful. But having to push the coffin into the furnace for cremation, mm -hmm. I don't want any of you to have to go through that. So please, take care of your loved ones. And if you've got the possibility of vaccination, please do it as soon as possible. So we don't ha you don't have to go through what I went through. Those were my parting words. And with that, yep. we've come to the end of this episode of Idol Downtime. Say it bye, everyone. Take care and don't be an idiot. Go get vaccinated. Don't be stupid. <laughs>